Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Ryan once again here with Michigan Storm Chasers. I have a few updates to share. I know it's a bit late here in the evening here on Tuesday. That's okay, though. Let's go ahead and dive into the latest guidance and SPC outlook. So if you can kind of keep an eye on our page, yesterday we posted about the SPC outlook having a marginal risk into the southeast portion of Michigan. That has been trimmed back quite a bit with just Monroe County, perhaps southeastern Lenawee County within that severe risk for tomorrow. I'll go ahead and preface this and say, overall, we're not expecting anything severe tomorrow. Uh, we'd have to see a lot of things slow down in terms of the storms, for example. Um, the better atmosphere should be displaced off to our south and to our east. Uh, so tomorrow, while there is a chance of thunderstorms across much of the state, the severe risk is quite low. If anything were to occur, it'd be tied very, very far south and east, probably toward that Monroe, Lenaway County area. Right now, we don't expect that to happen. But in the event it does trend that way, damaging winds would be the primary concern. There is currently no concern from us uh, or SPC for hail or tornadoes. So it should just be a damaging wind risk if anything were to develop, although a low chance of that as of right now. All right. The big question and probably the reason you're watching this video perhaps is the July 4th forecast here. Let's go ahead and start with the SPC outlook. First and foremost, the SPC does have much of the state in a lighter green color here. What that light green color means is just general thunderstorms are possible. Uh, notice here in the center of the state, uh, basically centered over Alma, Mount Pleasant, Flint areas, there is no current risk for general, general thunderstorms. Uh, but the whole entire UP, uh, 94 corridor in South Michigan, up toward Northern Lower, up by Gaylord, Traverse City, uh, is in a general thunderstorm risk. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna get thunderstorms. We'll go ahead and dive into that a little bit deeper. Uh, right now, the, env the environment, if any storm could pop up, would be favorable for those thunderstorms in general. But again, we have a few things working against that. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into some models, all right? So looking at the tomorrow, Wednesday timeframe here, uh, very simple, uh, we're, gonna make we're gonna make this very simple, okay? The coloration here of wind shear overlapping with instability shows up here on your screen. The brighter the color, as in yellows, oranges, reds, and purples would be more concerning. The green colors and a little bit off color greens are a little less concerning. All right, for tomorrow, uh, moving moving this through to the afternoon hours, notice how the better environment down here is displaced into Ohio and, and parts of Indiana. Uh, but notice how there's just, it's, it's very close here to that border of Michigan, uh, especially southeast Michigan there. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that just in case. Uh, the trigger here is moving, you know, from west to east here. So it should be displaced off to our south and east. But in the event that slows down, we'll be talking a chance, perhaps, of, th of some stronger thunderstorms in eastern Michigan. Again, low chance of that happening. Looking at your convective model for potential future radar, uh, all of the activity for tomorrow afternoon, starting right about here, this is at noon tomorrow, there is your activity displaced into Ohio, Indiana, there within that line. Uh, Michigan stays fairly dry, according to this model. Uh, so storms pop close, but just not in Michigan, so to speak. Outside that, though, some pop-up storms are possible. The better environment is to the south and east, so no pop-up storms tomorrow across the state should become severe. Uh, but again, with these summertime pop-up storms, we never can really rule out isolated severe in the way of damaging winds, perhaps some large hail as well, although the concern for that tomorrow is very low. Uh, if there's going to be any type of severe, it'll probably be further south and east. Now, let's go ahead and talk about July 4th. So number one thing I want to mention is we do look to have a cap in place over the atmosphere. What that cap's gonna do is it should limit us in terms of thunderstorm activity through the afternoon and evening, okay? There is a period of time in the very early morning hours and perhaps later in the evening, we may be talking at isolated rain chances. So looking at the convective model here, the potential future radar for July 4th, the morning of, we have a little bit of shower and storm activity down here in Indiana. Notice how it does creep up into Michigan here. This is 10 in the morning here across the I-94 corridor. That'll be something to watch there. We could see some showers move in. Uh, nothing severe at this point, but a rumble of thunder definitely possible there. Uh, but general showers should move west to east. Notice how much of the 96 corridor here from Grand Rapids over to Flint, over to Port Huron, is encompassed with the showers here. So perhaps a little bit of a wetter start to the day, although these shouldn't be too big of a deal. They shouldn't be a rain out, nothing like that. Uh, but if you have early day plans, especially further south, you may have some showers there. Uh, in the area. It shouldn't last long. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, once that does clear out, the afternoon does remain dry because of that capping inversion that we're going to be looking at across the state. 
But with these caps, they usually weaken as we get into the evening hours as the atmosphere cools. That weakens the cap. We may see a few pop-up showers and storms later on towards and after sunset. So after that 9 p.m. time frame and after that would be the most likely time. So uh, overall, it's not a very high chance that's going to happen. So any chance across the state is a low probability, so like 10, 20 percent. Um, but they are possible. We can't really say where at this point. Uh, this, at least at least statewide is what we're going to say at this point. Uh, again, deferring back to the SPC day three, they do have a, a large portion of Michigan general thunderstorm. But notice the central part of Michigan there is not in a general thunderstorm risk. That may change. It may not. Uh, right now, areas in light green would have that higher threat uh, for a pop-up storm through the evening hours. Okay, but overall temperatures across the state should be roughly around 80 to low 80s, right around 83 or so for a high uh, and then perhaps some peaks of sunshine in the afternoon as well, especially areas uh, in that central part of Michigan here. Uh, looking at your cloud cover maps and stuff like that, it does appear broken cloud cover. It uh, does exist pretty much statewide, uh, but especially on a central portion of Michigan, we are going to see a little bit higher chance of some clear, uh, clear skies there. So perhaps some sun. Uh, but if clouds do rule the day, bump those high temps down just a bit, probably closer to 80 or perhaps the high 70s. The further north you go, and if you're close to a lake as well, those areas, of course, will be cooler, uh, just how Michigan is. Uh, but overall, across much of the state, uh, right around 80 or low 80s would be your normal uh, temperature. Uh, and expect drier conditions in the afternoon with only a pop-up possible later in the afternoon as we get toward that sunset and after sunset especially. Okay, so you guys enjoy your July 4th if you have plans. It should be okay for the most part. Nothing should be a rain out by any means. Uh, but it definitely is not going to be, you know, you're sunny and 80. You know, it's not going to be perfect weather, but we'll make do. Uh, it's, it's Michigan, and that's uh, how it goes a lot of times here. Uh, so that is the gist of it. We are con continuing to watch Friday as well as you caught our Sunday night live stream. We are talking about potential severe weather on Friday. That still does appear to be the case at this point. Again, there is some stuff working against the overall risk for severe, uh, but we are seeing a low-pressure system move into the area here. Uh, as we get into the day on Friday, and then that could spark off showers and storms. The wind shear is really good for Friday. I'm going to say it up front. The wind shear is good, but the instability right now is shown to be on the weaker side of things. So we need to kick the instability up if we want to get any substantial severe weather. Looking at the overlap again of instability and wind shear, we're seeing here on Thursday. Here we go into Friday. Bam, there we go. The entire lower part of Michigan here is in that uh, not a good environment, but a good enough environment here for perhaps a stray shower or storm that could be strong to severe. Damaging winds would be your primary concern with this. We are not concerned at this point for hail. Uh, we need an important ingredient for uh, hail would be lapse rates. Lapse rates in the mid-levels are very weak, not supportive of hail. Uh, but we cannot rule out a tornado or two in the state given the wind shear that's here. But again, it takes a lot more than just wind shear to get tornadoes to occur. So we need the instability. We need the moisture. We need all the cake ingredients to come together, so to speak, uh, to bake our cake for severe weather. We're missing a few things here, uh, but it just appears to be sufficient just to kind of mention we're kind of watching it. Uh, but nothing to be concerned about yet. Let's wait another day or two. We're still, you know, three, four days out from this. So. Take with a grain of salt. Uh, we're continuing to watch it, but nothing set in stone at this point. And especially further east in Michigan, you go uh, at this point in time, there's appear to be the higher chance. So we're going to say if you guys know where US 23 is uh, from the Tri-Cities, Flint down to uh, Dundee to the border of Ohio, uh, US 23 there in points eastward would have the best chance as of right now. Thinking uh, that could ship back west easily as we are three days out. So a lot of time for this to develop. All right. With that being said, we're going to save the weekend for a later video. Just wanted to pop on here. I know it's again, it's late. I apologize for not getting one out early this morning. I had a busy schedule this morning. So want to get it out as soon as we possibly could. And that is now here. I'm making this video at 845 in the evening. So hopefully, hopefully this uh, reaches those people who uh, usually watch our uh, videos early in the morning as well. So you guys have a great evening, a great day tomorrow. Expect updates from us tomorrow for your July 4th forecast and perhaps Friday as well uh, for any type of severe event. But you guys enjoy your holiday coming up and you guys also have a great night and stay safe.